Good afternoon to everyone. It's good to be here today. As usual, I always appreciate the opportunity to come up and talk. Well, brethren, I think with all of us here, and for those who are going to look at this video tape later, that in our country here, in our nation, uh, brethren, I think we're all aware that there's something lacking in people's thinking and the way they do things and why they do them. And what's lacking, brethren, is wisdom in what they do. I think we see that glaringly in what's going on. You can just look at the news and you can see what educational system is doing to our children. You can see what government's doing on all levels and so on. So <clears throat> I would say, I'm going to hasten to say that in some cases, or maybe in a lot of cases, wisdom is non-existent in our society. I'm only talking about here in the United States. Okay. So the question comes up, where can we find wisdom in the true sense of the word? Well, in the book of Job, it describes a lot of statements and also questions that go with it about wisdom. But before I do that, I want to show you and go over with you in the book of Kings, 1 Kings, in verse chapter 4, verse 29 to 34. I'm going to show you one individual that lived over 2,000 years, maybe 25, 2,600 years ago. His name was Solomon. And it has been said of him that he was the wisest man that ever lived. And he was in many, many areas of life. I want to read to you what Solomon's wisdom was as mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. Let's turn to 1 Kings 4. I'm going to start in verse 29 and go to verse 34. I think it's important to know how wise this man was because he was blessed by our Creator and shown these things. Starting in the verse 29, our Creator God in heaven gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight and a breath of understanding as measureless as the sand of the sea. So Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the men of the east and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than any other man, including Ethan the Ezraite, wiser than Heman, Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs numbered 1,005. He described plant life from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the walls. He also taught about animals and birds, reptiles, and fish. Men of all nations came to listen to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. Wow. You know, if we had a gentleman like that today in leadership somewhere on the face of this earth, wow, I would get a plane ticket, believe me, I would, and fly to that country. And if it was here in the United States, I'd be front and center to listen to someone like that who was blessed with such wisdom, godly wisdom and knowledge, the right way in righteousness. So my title today, brethren, is Finding Wisdom. Finding Wisdom. I want you to turn, if you will, with me to Job. Let's go to Job. Here was a man who was put through the ringer. I'm going to use that word, ringer. He was really downtrodden, but he was very wealthy and, and very good. And then Satan challenged our creator, say, look, this guy, he's got everything. Put him to the test. So our Messiah or, or our creator says, all right, but you're not to hurt him or kill him. So he was put through the test, and he hung on to the faith and the wisdom in our creator. And you know the story behind that, I'm sure. Job 28, let's turn there. The book of Job, in 20, uh, chapter 28, okay, if you will. <clears throat> Job 28, and we'll go to verse 12, okay. So 
So the question here, brethren, starting in verse 12, chapter 28, but where can wisdom be found? Where does understanding dwell? Man does not comprehend its worth. It cannot be found in the land of the living. The deep says, it's not in me. The sea says, it's not with me. It cannot be bought with the finest gold, nor can its price be weighed in silver. It cannot be bought with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx and sapphires. Neither gold nor crystal can him compare with it, nor can it be had for jewels of gold. Coral and jasper are not worthy of mention. The price of wisdom is beyond rubies. The topaz of Cush cannot compete with it. It cannot be bought with pure gold. So where then does wisdom come from? Where does understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, concealed even from the birds of the air. Destruction and death say only a rumor of it has reached our ears. Our creator God in heaven understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters, when he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm, then he looked at wisdom and appraised it. He confirmed it and tested it. And he said to man, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. Wow. How people should be searching for wisdom. Well, I think many people in this country are searching in the wrong areas of life, brethren. It sure seems that way to me, and I'm sure it does to you. They're looking in the wrong places for wisdom. The fear of our Creator God and keeping His laws is the beginning of it. He sends it to us in our minds and hearts and explains it to us in our spirit. Okay. <clears throat> the wise use of wisdom. I want to, if you will, look at Isaiah 33 in the book of Isaiah. Interesting statements there about wisdom. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the book of Isaiah, we'll go here to 33. And I'm going to read to you in verse 6. Isaiah 33, 6. He will be the sure foundation for your times, a rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. The fear of the Lord. There it is again. Wisdom is a shelter, brethren. Let's look over in Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes. In chapter 7, I'm going to read to you verse 11 and 12. Wisdom is like an inheritance. It is a good thing and benefits those who see the sun. Wisdom is a shelter as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this, that the wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. That is something to think about. It preserves the life of its possessor, those who have wisdom, because their life's going to be extended and protected. Protection is everything here. He's going to show us the way, by way of wisdom. Proper use of knowledge, brethren. Knowing our Creator God in heaven is knowing wisdom, because he'll give it to us. Now, the question may come up, what do you do if you encounter someone who lacks wisdom? I'm sure we've all run into those people. At one time, we lacked wisdom, proper knowledge, and everything way long time ago. But what do you do when you come upon someone? It could be a family member. It could be your neighbor, your friend, distant relatives. But let's turn over to the book of James, 
Okay, we're going to go into the New Testament now, in the book of James. And brethren, I'll say this, <clears throat> the scriptures and everything said in it was so miraculously preserved down through the centuries. And I, I just think it's wonderful that we have it today, because we certainly need it desperately today. That all these sayings and verses that help us out were preserved for us. All right, let's look at James in chapter 1, okay? James 1. I'm going to read to you verses 5 to 8. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask our Creator God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That any man should ever think that he will receive anything from the eternal, he is a double-minded man, he's unstable in all he does. So one of the wonderful things about this statement, brethren, is that our Father in Heaven is not going to find fault with us when we ask and pray for wisdom. That's his compassion and love for us. Imagine that. If he found fault with me, boy, I'd be the dumbest guy walking around. I mean, I can just imagine myself if he found fault with me, oh, yeah, you, you do dumb things, well, I'm not going to help you. But that's not the way our Father in Heaven operates. He is loving, He is compassionate, and in sincerity we ask Him to show us the way. He'll give us the wisdom and the knowledge to do what's right, and to be an example to others, too. That's the wonderful part about our Father in Heaven, His love and mercy and kindness towards us. Now, the other side of the fence is, suppose you run into somebody that says, <clears throat> that thinks that they're really wise, and they, they know everything. I mean, I've, we've all run into that person, uh, in work especially, <laughs> and especially at work and even in school, that, uh, yeah, I know all about that. You don't have to tell me about that, you know, and, uh, and we, we run into this once in a while. But that's, that's life when we meet up with people. But there's a statement in the Bible about those people. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. See, Paul the Apostle, uh, he was um, really put through, if I could say, the spiritual grinder in life, and even the physical. He was really beaten up, stoned, you know. But boy, did he stay by the faith. He stuck with the faith. And he, was, he tried to help people throughout all of Asia. And he even went to England at one point. He was there for a while, believe it or not, the British Isles. But anyway, he had a statement to say about people you run into that think they know everything. <laughs> and we've run into that. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 18 to 23. Do not deceive yourselves if any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool, so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, <clears throat> the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then, no more boasting about men. Wow, that's right to the point, isn't it? Isn't that right to the point? Now, brethren... As for us here, we are all given certain spiritual gifts, all of us. And I would like for you to turn to 1 Corinthians 12, if you will, and go to verse 12, uh, chapter 12. <clears throat> I'd like to read to you something here, verses 7 to 11, 1 Corinthians 12. <clears throat> now to each one of each. Now, excuse me, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge, by means of the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, by the one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, and to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between the spirits. 
to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to so another interpretation of tongues. All these are the works of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Wow, that's wonderful to know that. It really is. Now, <clears throat> the benefits of having wisdom. There are wonderful benefits, brethren. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 on that, if you will. The book of Ecclesiastes. I'm going to turn to chapter number 2. I'm going to read to you verse 13. I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. Let's go to chapter 9. Go over to chapter 9. I'm going to read to you verses 13. And I'm going to go through verse 18. So that's Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 9, verses 13 to 18. Here we are. I also saw under the sun this example of wisdom that greatly impressed me. There was once a small city with only a few people in it, and a powerful king came against it, surrounded it, and built huge siege works against it. Now there lived in that city a, a man poor but wise, and he saved the city by his wisdom. But nobody remembered that poor man. So I said, wisdom is better than strength, but the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are no longer needed or heeded. The quiet words of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouts of a ruler of fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Brethren, when I read that part of the statement, I thought about Hitler's Germany. One man brought that entire nation to destruction. There was no wisdom in it. Wisdom is always better than weapons of war. It would be wonderful to have leaders like that. And I'll tell you this right now, there's going to come a day on this earth when that's going to be so, where we're going to have men of wisdom, but our Messiah first is going to teach them and show them when he comes back. He's going to show them that wisdom is always better than weapons of war. What a wonderful statement that is. Let's go over to chapter 10. Okay, I want to read to you verse 2 and 3. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. Even as he walks along the road, the fool lacks sense and shows everyone how stupid he is. Brethren, that's the first time I heard that word stupid used in the Bible. It, it says it right here, how stupid he is. So in any event, these are, if I can say, words of wisdom. I mean, this is why in our country here we need wisdom in our leaders, in our families, in communities all over. So that brings us or me to a, a point, brethren, where I need to say, so what are we supposed to do? What shall we be doing in light of knowing wisdom in this day and age that we live in? Let's look at Colossians 4, book of Colossians, coming into the New Testament here. <clears throat> Colossians 4. And I'm going to read to you verse 5 to 6. Here's, here's some very good instructions, brethren, for all of us. It says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your con conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Proverbs 14, verse 16. Let's go over to there for a moment. Proverbs 14, verse 16. A wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot-headed and reckless. Final instructions, brethren, on wisdom. Let's read Proverbs 9. I want to go over to chapter 9. And I'm going to read to you verses 9 through 12. Here we are. Instruct a wise man, and he will be wiser still. 
Teach a righteous man, and he will add to his learning. The fear of the eternal is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through me your days will be many, as through wisdom. And years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. So brethren, let's be wise in all that we do, that we may have a long life on this earth and be an example for others and help them. Because everybody needs it. Thank you.